Hi, this is Frode, and welcome to Actualize Notes TV, where I deliver five big ideas that we can use to actualize our potential. And today we have another great book, The Confidence Gap by Russ Harris. The Confidence Gap, subtitle, A Guide to Overcoming Fear and Self-Doubt. Russ Harris is a medical practitioner, psychotherapist, and executive coach. He is the author of the best-selling book, The Happiness Trap, that I'm going to cover in the future, and he's Australia's foremost provider of acceptance and commitment therapy, a training uh, in uh, acceptance and commitment therapy, which is a form of uh, cutting-edge cognitive behavioral therapy. Really useful stuff. If you want to improve your confidence and overcome fear and self-doubt, this is a wise option. And uh, the book has, uh, ideas in the book has really helped me a lot. Now, five ideas. If you have any questions, you can just comment them down below. Now, let's get started. The first big idea, the gap plus confidence. So, the confidence gap is really that place where your fear gets in the way of your dreams and ambitions. It's the place where you think you need to feel confident before you act on your values and what's most important to you, what really matters. So you can uh, think of it like this. You're in a valley and you don't feel really confident and you think you need to be up there before you can start acting on your values. But really, there are two... That was, uh, that's the confidence gap. And Ross also says that, uh, and more on this soon, there, there are two definitions of confidence. First, there is the uh, feeling of certainty or assurance. So it's the feeling confidence, so the feeling. And then it is an act of trust or reliance. There is the action of confidence. And the feeling confident it's the uh, widely most used, uh, the way most people use the term, because they think um, they need this powerful feeling of being absolutely certain and having no doubt, no negative thoughts about how what might go wrong. But an, um, a far less used meaning of the word is the action of confidence, which means that you act, you have an act of trust or reliance, and. The word confidence really comes to, uh, has a, uh, and the definition, an act of trust or reliance, is a much older meaning of the word confidence, and comes from, has its ancient origins in Latin. Confidence comes from the Latin words com, which means with and fidere, which means to trust. Because when you trust someone, you, uh, there, most often we have the, this feeling and we are not really confident when we trust someone. But we perform an act of trust or reliance. Trust that the person will give the money back, that he will catch us when we fall, that he won't cheat on us, etc. But it's really an action, it's not a feeling. So that's the gap plus confidence defined. Next big idea, the golden rule. The golden rule is... As Ross says, the actions of confidence come first. The feelings of confidence come later. Because uh, he says that we need... If you want to feel confident in anything, tennis, soccer, football, or public speaking, writing, or making these videos, we need to practice. We need to constantly perform acts of trust or reliance. Because if not, we won't feel confident. And uh, if we stop practicing, the, our skills, our confident, confidence will get rusty. Darren Hardy talks about the same concept in The Compound Effect, where he says, uh, he talks about big mo, which is momentum. When you do something, take the right choices over an extended period of time, you become better, you feel more confident, and your skills improve. You can, uh, right now, picture your confidence as a steam locomotive. 
in the beginning, it needs a lot of effort to get that uh, locomotive rolling. But once it's really rolling, that uh, <laughs> those uh, thousands of tons of uh, locomotive becomes unstoppable. But if it just then slowed down the locomotive by not practicing it anymore, those acts of confidence, then your skills and confidence will get rusty. It will become a much lot harder for you to feel confident in what you do. And I re often uh, see this when I stop making these videos for a couple of days or a couple of weeks. It becomes much harder to come back and make a video than if I do it every single day. But also, there's a lovely paradox with uh, the golden rule. It's that when you first perform those acts of confidence, the feelings of confidence will follow. As the golden rule says, the acts of confidence action of confidence comes first, the feelings of confidence come later. And that's really useful for if for anything. We don't need to feel confident before we act. Next big idea, name it. Ross presents two different modes of um, thinking. We have avoidance and expansion. When we are in avoidance mode, we are trying to avoid and get rid of our uncomfortable feelings and thoughts. When we are in expansion mode, we make space for those thoughts and feelings. We allow them to be there. We might not like those feelings, we might not want them, but we allow them to be there. We don't fight them. And if we are able to do this effectively, we minimize the negative impact they will have on us. And he uses the acronym NAME as a technique we can use to expand and make space for our feelings and thoughts. Let's use an example for fear. Let's say you feel fear about something, public speaking or your chosen fear. Name really stands for N, you need to notice the feeling, then we acknowledge it, then we make space And last, we expand our awareness. So really, notice, noticing the feeling means that you notice it's there. Is it where, it where it is? Is it in your chest? Do you feel it in your forehead? Or is your stomach in a knot? You just simply notice it. You don't judge it, you notice it. Acknowledge, it means that you, you say, Here's fear. You use basic self-talk. Here's fear or here's a feeling of fear. What we don't want to do is fuse with those feelings or thoughts. Because we are not our feelings. If you feel fear, you are not fear. So you don't want to say, I'm afraid or I'm feeling fear. Just say, here's fear. This helps you detach from the feeling. Next, make space. Try to breathe into the feeling to the extent that you can imagine that, of course. And this is to anchor yourself in the present moment. Lastly, we want to expand our awareness. Simultaneously feel that the feeling is there and allow it to be there while we do what we need to do. So that's notice, acknowledge, make space and expand. Really effective. Ross says, to handle any strong emotion effectively, we need to name it. And it's, it'll become easier and easier to remember this sequence and how you do it if you just repeat it two to three times, maybe. Next big idea, two options. Russ gives us two options. Option number one, you can choose to do those things that are most important to you and what really matters when you feel like it. When you feel optimistic, you will uh, do the things that are important to you and that you've chosen to do. But if you feel bad or not in a mood or not so energetic, then you just give up. And do you live the rest of your days on this planet at the mercy of your emotions? The other option is you continue to take action on what really matters, whether you feel like it or not. You perform acts of trust or reliance. If you are optimistic or pessimistic, you feel good or feel bad, energetic or not energetic, you keep doing the things you have chosen to do. 
and what you know really matters. And here's the paradox that I talked about uh, above. When you do those, uh, keep taking those actions that you know are most important, the feelings of confidence are going to come, and the other good feelings of accomplishment, satisfaction, uh, all of that. So really, we have two options. Choose to do the things uh, no matter what happens, no matter how we feel, or we can only do it when we feel like it. Next big idea, courage. I love that word. Courage is um, a word that comes from the has Latin origins. It's come from the Latin word core, which means heart. So really, courage is doing what's in our hearts. Courage is acting according to our values, what is most important to us. But when we act courageously, what feelings do you think are going to arrive? Fear, of course, because when you do things we haven't done before, fear is going to arrive. But as uh, J Ross says, courage is not the absence of fear. It's doing what really matters despite our fears. Really, it's the golden rule. The actions of confidence come first, the feelings of confidence come later. And I think about that, that's courage. Two options. Do what matters when you, only when you feel like it, or do what matters no matter what. Name it. We want to expand and make space for our emotions by noticing it. Here, uh, noticing it where it is. Acknowledge, here's fear. Make, or the other emotions. Make space. Breathe into it. Yeah. And expand awareness. Feel the feeling while doing what you need to do. The golden rule, actions of confidence come first, feelings of confidence come later. The gap plus confidence. The gap is when you think you need to feel confidence before you take the actions. Confidence defined, this is the feeling of certainty or assurance, this powerful feeling that you are 100% certain everything will be alright. And action, act of trust or reliance, that's what we want to do. So, that was a quick look at the confidence gap. Thank you, Ross Harris. And what's the number one idea that jumped out at you? And how can you make it a more practically embodied part of who you are starting today? Again, if you have questions, you can just comment them below this video. I hope you enjoyed and that you continue to actualize your potential so we can create a better world together. Thanks for watching. Have another awesome day. See ya.